Hello, my name is Robert Fleming. I work for Matrix 42 and uh, I'm responsible for sales activities in Northern Europe. Today, I want to talk to you about Farscope discovery and dependency mapping and how we can use discovery and dependency mapping to support your security objectives and to help you um, to ensure that you secure your critical business services. First of all, I just want to tell you a little bit about Matrix 42. Matrix 42 is a global company with a headquarters in Frankfurt, Germany. We have over 500 employees and we're supporting approximately 5,000 customers. Um, most of those customers are in um, the Central European region, but we have an increasing number of customers across Europe, Asia, and the Americas. In terms of um, Matrix 42's uh, history, we've been in business since 1992, so we're operating for almost 30 years now. And we have a broad solution set, which our customers um, are, have been using and like, and we see very high renewal rates in terms of our services. So the 98.9% of renewals indicates that basically our solutions are, are good and our customers like them. In terms of exactly what our product focus is, uh, Matrix 42's goal is to simplify and secure digital work. And in terms of what this means, we're seeing an environment where we have more customers with more IT applications, more users using those applications, and more devices that they're using to access those business applications. So some workers are at home, some workers are in the office, some workers are you know, um, using different mechanisms, they're involved in cloud storage, they're involved in on-premise storage, et cetera. So, there's a lot of different scenarios which are making IT increasingly more complicated. And Matrix 42's goal is to simplify that work so that you can have a suite of tools that will allow you to manage that effectively and to keep it secure. In terms of our products, we have two main product sets. Our user endpoint management products, which cover patch management, lifecycle management, um, it covers mobility, management, um, we look at error detection, uh, data protection, and remote desktop management. And this all comes in under our secure user endpoint management. And then we have our enterprise service management suite of products, which covers our enterprise service management solutions, but also um, our asset management solutions for software asset management, for discovery and dependency mapping, and also for and monitoring of IT environments. All of these products are built on a common platform, what we call our digital workspace platform, and this ensures that we have a single sort of modular um, suite of solutions that can all be accessed via a common user interface, um, and you can move data or access data in any module that becomes visible in other modules, etc. So it's a it's a it's a single suite but it's modular in terms of the fact that you can select the bits you want and use the bits you want. In terms of um, talking about security and the, the challenges that we need uh, to consider, today I very much want to start by talking about how we use discovery and dependency mapping to support your, your security objectives. The first statement here really sums up um, the product very well in terms of saying, you know, if you don't understand what assets you have and how those assets support your critical business services, then there's no way you're going to be able to effectively manage your IT and keep it secure. Very few companies have a complete and accurate picture of their IT environment. What we're seeing is a continuously evolving and changing IT environment. We see an increasing number of new technologies coming into an environment. For example, we're seeing a lot of uh, IoT or a lot of uh, you know, high technology devices that maybe are non-traditional and, and are not picked up um, by traditional mechanisms of discovery. So in order to sort of capture all of this and to build a record, um, it's, it, it's a challenge. Um, the second point is that once you build this record and once you have this inventory of all your assets, you then find that it's continuously moving. There's things changing all the time. There's new services being launched, there's new technologies coming in. So keeping that inventory up to date 
and ensuring that it's uh, it's something that you have a complete picture of um, so that you can manage it, brings you back to the very first challenge, which is that you need to be able to understand it, not just once, but continuously in order to be able to secure and manage it effectively. If you look specifically at security, we we'll see um, just best to start with a basic definition of security. Um, say security is about being protected and being kept safe from harm. In the context of overall business services, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, look at a challenge of trying to identify if there's any unapproved or any fraudulent activities occurring, especially to your critical services. We want to identify these as soon as possible so that they can be investigated and blocked if necessary. We also want to ensure that only authorized devices can access critical or sensitive services. Again, if something a uh, user that shouldn't be accessing a service is trying to access a service, we want to be able to identify that so that we can block it or restrict it. In terms of um, doing this, we want to talk very specifically about real-time discovery and dependency mapping to immediately identify, you know, how unplanned changes or unexpected behaviors can be identified, how rogue activities or rogue devices coming into your network can be identified and blocked, or if there's anything that's going to cause a service impacting issue, how that can maybe be assessed or for impact so that it can be potentially stopped or prevented from happening. Going to the actual solution now, um, Prescope secure discovery and dependency mapping allows you to find all the assets in your network. It allows you to find all the dependencies and it allows you to map those assets and dependencies into the business services that they support. So in terms of what we're doing is we're finding all your assets. We're not just using predefined pings or scans to find assets you already know about. We're using traffic data to follow traffic around your network so that everything that there's traffic uh, going to and coming from in your network is identified. And we use this to build an inventory of all your assets. But because we're also looking at traffic, we can also see the dependencies and we can map those dependencies to build business services. Once we have these services, we can then say, okay, what should this service really look like from an optimal point of view? Because when we automatically capture and build a service, we will see things in that service that we don't necessarily want to see. So for example, there might be antivirus or there might be things like um, um, our directory services in there. Um, <clears throat> these are services potentially in their own right. But for any service, for example, like a payroll service, we might not necessarily want to see those things in there because they just confuse the picture. So we can filter those out and we can create a core picture of what we want to see in terms of the core infrastructure that supports the service and the end user devices that are accessing that service. We can then say, okay, we've got an agreed version of a service which can be baselined. And once we baseline that service, because we're looking at it in real time, we can continue to monitor that and detect changes um, and alert on those changes as and when they occur. If we specifically look at these baselines, you can see in the picture that the service is showing that a new device or a new um, asset, uh, IT asset is communicating with the service. Um, this can be identified and highlighted um, and alerted to people so that they can see what's happening. Because Firescope is monitoring the baseline services continuously, <clears throat> we can then say, okay, something new has happened here, so let's generate an alert. And when we get these alerts, it can be one of really three types of things happening. The first thing is, that is confirmation that maybe an approved change has occurred. So maybe there was a planned upgrade or a planned change to a service happening. We can detect that change and we can see that it's happened and we can say, okay, job done. We can now get an approval that it's occurred. The second thing is that maybe somebody's doing something that hasn't gone through the change management procedure and it's an unapproved change or some sort of shadow IT that again, we can say, okay, somebody's doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Let's identify an alert on that and let's go and investigate it and turn it off or block it if we need to. The final thing is that it could be potentially some external threat or some sort of fraudulent activity or a rogue device. Sometimes when we build these maps, we see 
devices that are doing port scanning or maybe trying to communicate with everything. And these are outside, potentially rogue devices, or maybe things that have just uh, been running for a while and people people just didn't know about them and they just need to be, again, identified and switched off. Because the predefined scans never found these, um, they're, they've been running for a while. So we use traffic to find them and we can we can spot them straight away. The other key point as well is that we can use uh, changes to traffic to actually identify changes within devices themselves. So maybe a device is communicating every day or continuously. If that device goes for a period of time where it stopped communicating, we can use essentially a, lo- a last seen timer to actually also trigger that maybe something is going wrong with that device. I want to talk a little bit more about change management as well, because um, not only are we seeing changes to baselines where assets are being added or devices are coming in and connecting to a network that potentially are fraudulent, but we also see uh, the concept of securing a service and ensuring the service is is performing continuously and to the best of its ability. Um, Gartner said that 80% of service impacting issues are caused as a result of change. And there's a lot of studies done to say that effective change management will allow you to significantly reduce the numbers of failures that occur, the impact um, caused maybe due to service outages or the fact that projects need to be rolled back and tried again. Um, You know, what Firescope will allow you to do is it will allow you whenever you're completing a change or, or trying to scope a change, to see all the assets that are going to be affected by that change. So all the infrastructure, all the devices that are going to be changed so that you can correctly scope that project. We can see what infrastructure uh, assets we need to be considered. And we can also see if there's any connected devices that maybe need to be informed or told about a change that's coming. We don't just do this at asset level. We can also do this at service level. So one of the core things or common things that we also see is customers come to us and say they want to migrate a service from one environment to another, maybe from on-premise into the cloud. But when they do this, they need to consider not just the service itself and the assets that support that service, but they also need to look at the fact that, you know, some of the assets here maybe support multiple services. So when you migrate that service to the cloud, you can't automatically just decommission hardware that maybe you thought was free up as a result of the migration. That hardware potentially still supports other services. And we can generate reports to show what level of complexity and what level of dependency exists between these services so that you can map across all the different environments. The final sort of point that I really want to talk about is governance. Um, Security and governance are also quite closely related. when we talk about our baselines and talk about recording changes in real time to the services that critically support your business, we also sort of say, okay, we can build a record of what's happened over time. So we can log this data and we can see what devices have been accessing services over time. We can record that so that we can use it as evidence to basically say, I don't know unauthorized devices connected to a service, or here's a list of the devices that connected to a service that shouldn't have authorized, and this is what we've done about it. We've blocked them, or we've removed them, or we've we've restricted permissions. We can export that log data so that it can be fed into your own reporting tools so that you can build up your own reports for compliance and audit purposes. So in regulated industries, maybe you have particular reports that you want to show for services to say that a certain service over time has only been accessed by certain devices um, and that all the security measures that are in place are correct and appropriate for that service. Um, We've been using this to support a number of um, standards, industry security standards, PCI, DSS, uh, HIPAA, GDPR, et cetera. We're seeing customers that need this information to support and demonstrate compliance to those uh, requirements. The other thing as well, just when we talk about governance is to say that the data we have, because we know what devices and what infrastructure is is supporting each service, 
is very, very valuable in terms of just downstream business intelligence and analytics. Um, we can export the data to be joined or um, added to other data that's collected from other parts of the network so that uh, very rich um, analytics can be developed. And we can also feed things like, say, user behavior in terms of whether traffic is changing from devices over time. In terms of the key points and the key takeaways that I wanted to try and finish up with for today, the first thing is Firescope gives you a persistent observation of your IT environment. Going back to the statement and the quote that I got from the customer, which is that you need to understand all your IT in order to effectively manage and secure your environment. Well, Firescope gives you that. We do find all the IT because we're using traffic and we're following traffic around your network. So for any connected device, we will find it. Uh, and we do this continuously. So it's a persistent observation, which means that not only do we find it, but we keep it up to date over time. Because we can baseline services, we can generate alerts. And these alerts can be used to essentially show whenever any changes have happened to your key services. We talk about asset intelligence. Asset intelligence is all about changes in patterns or unexpected things happening. So if you have a device that regularly communicates or even just communicates maybe once a day, um, if that starts to change, we can see that based on the last seen uh, alert. So if something doesn't um, generate traffic as expected, we can say, okay, potentially there's an issue there and potentially that's something that we need to go and investigate. One of the key points for Firescope is that we have this multi-layer visibility. Um, so we don't just give you a topology view. We're showing you applications, we're showing you network traffic, we're showing you storage, we're showing you virtual um, machines, we're showing you devices. We can give you all these different layers of traffic so that you can look at them and you can build services that are multi-layer and show dependencies across all these layers. Firescope has a number of integration possibilities. We integrate fully within the Matrix 42 portfolio, so we can connect to our own ITSM tools, uh, software asset management tools, uh, user endpoint management tools, but also we can connect to other um, vendor solutions. So if there's other ITSM solutions in the environment or other CMDBs that you want to pull this data into, Firescope can feed all of those tools as well. Finally, um, we have uh, uh, everything built as a secure solution. Um, and by secure, we're talking about, we don't need any um, admin level access to your network data. We are only looking at packet header data. We're not going into looking at any sort of uh, confidential data in your environments or whatever. We're typically only looking at summary data. So, uh, because we look at things like S-Flow and NetFlow traffic, we're talking about uh, summaries, so we're not even looking at specific headers, just maybe figures like 500 packets passed from this device to this device in the last five minutes. This is the sort of level of data that we're capturing, and this allows us to build these maps. So in terms of external security, we're not doing anything that's going to impact uh, your environment or, or maybe get involved with your sensitive data. All our solutions are built with security from the ground up, and I'm happy to answer any questions about uh, or to provide any further detail you need to show how this solution is implemented um, and the architecture behind it. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions and answers. If you want any further detail, we have a lot of information on our website, uh, Matrix42. Um, also, please contact me. I'm happy to provide any information or to help you with any questions or any demos that you would like to see the software in action or to discuss further about how we may be able to help you um, with your security challenges. With that, I'll hand over to the questions and answers and thanks very much for your time.